The Trapper is one of Dead by Daylight's most classic and iconic killers. Unfortunately, over the years, the game has gotten a bit too ahead of the gameplay that he has to offer, leaving him toward the very bottom of most tier lists. What would it take to transform our lame Trapper into a killer that's worthy of being on the front cover of the game? First, we need to start off on kind of an unintuitive suggestion. We need to nerf him. What do I mean by that? One of the Trappy Boy's strongest aspects is his ability to hook a survivor in a very isolated location like the basement and completely lock it down. If the Trapper is set up properly and wills it, that survivor will die. For the remaining survivors, if they want to actually get the rescue, that situation is at best a hook trade and at worst a full team snowball. Otherwise, they have to be on comms or have enough game sense to quickly split on gens and hope that they have enough time to complete them before the hooked survivor times out and the Trapper repeats the cycle on one of them. As the game currently stands, I don't see a way to buff the Trapper that doesn't also buff this absolutely degenerate scenario. Before we do anything else, I think the killer basement needs to be completely removed. Sure, this might break a handful of archive challenges, but other than that, what does the basement really add to the game other than an easy spot to camp? Put a replacement hook nearby so as to not gimp the killer, and that's where the rest of the Trapper changes can start. One of the biggest weaknesses that the Trapper has is not with his power itself, but actually with the map generation and decoration. Finding thick enough grass or other debris to disguise a trap in a useful spot is getting more and more rare with each new map and each rework that behavior does. This is detrimental to his power having any use in chase besides zoning, because survivors can literally look at the floor while running and easily avoid the traps. Now, assuming behavior isn't going to change their art direction just for one killer, what's an alternative to make Evan's traps have a stronger element of surprise? I see two different ways to go about it. One idea is to add some kind of camouflage to the traps, like the tar bottle add-on but making it base kit and actually effective. This is difficult though, since many maps feature a variety of different floor textures. Even if the camouflage were map based, there's no guarantee that you could equally disguise something in the dirt outside when compared to steel gratings or stone tiles inside of a main building. Designing enough art assets would be a chore for the teams at Behavior, who would have to account for all textures in all maps currently present and the future ones as well. This is likely not a maintainable solution. So what's the other option to make traps more difficult to spot mid-chase? Well, we could give survivors less time to search around, thus reducing their reaction time to a well-placed trap. What if the trapper had a faster base move speed? Instead of 115, why not 117 or even 120? Behavior seems very firm in their established killer templates because they don't want to skew the game with too many different variables on the different killers. It would be too hard to balance if every killer had significant base stat differences too, on top of their respective powers. All killers need to abide by the same rules, guys. Am I right? No, but seriously. Would it make the trapper an unstoppable juggernaut who mercilessly rips through everything? No, I, I don't think so. His power still remains relatively simple, and he's otherwise just an M1 machete man. It does, however, accomplish the goal of putting more pressure on the survivors, so they can't avoid traps mid-chase as easily, and have to be more risky in their plays while looping. This also helps address another one of Trapper's weaknesses, his overall map pressure. Raising his base movement speed just a touch should help in his traversal from point A to B without being too oppressive. And on top of that, yo, give my man base kit coffee grounds. Setting up a trap should not be a punishment. Let's grant him a little speed boost so that he can get back into the action whenever he needs to make a tactical pit stop. Like, th they literally made this change on night before doing it on Trapper, like what's that about? One last little thing we could do to polish up some of the rough edges is maybe even give him an extra haste effect when a survivor steps in a trap. It feels bad when someone gets snared just far enough away that you don't know if you could make it there or not. The trapper should be rewarded for catching a survivor in a clever trap, regardless of if they were in a chase or not. But how could the trapper get value from any of this when the initial trap spawning logic can be so horrendous? I think they tried to buff this at some point, but at the start of the game, traps can still spawn on different elevations and prohibitively far corners of the map. A start to fixing this could be to prevent traps from spawning on different planes of elevation besides the primary level that each particular map plays on. This, of course, would not be as useful on maps like The Game or on Midwitch that are literally built around having two stories in the first place, but the main idea is no more spawning traps on away-facing hills or random upper catwalks. This is only a partial solution, though. Any kind of spawning logic is going to end up being inconvenient for some kind of corner cases. The real issue stems from wanting to get your most useless trap into a new position where it becomes useful. Maybe they could add a way to recycle traps, similar to Hag or Freddy. If we're worried about Trapper always having access to all traps at any time, 
keep the regular or slightly tweaked spawning logic, but then make it so that lockers or something like Plague's Fountains are reload points. Imagine a little mini workshop where the trapper could quickly materialize new traps in exchange for despawning older, further, or already disarmed ones. Maybe even have disarmed traps immediately despawn and appear back in the trapper's inventory. The spawn logic on lockers and unique killer interactables could be rough for certain maps, but doing this puts Trapper's power into a more common framework that other killers use and could also benefit from if it got further improved. All of these changes combined would give Trapper extra mobility, buff his chase game, and yield more consistency in his area control. I don't think it's enough to break him, but it's definitely enough to at least elevate his power level to be more comparable with some of the other standard DBD killers. This is just my perspective though, my unrevised opinion and speculation. My proposals are all within the realm of what Trapper's power and abilities already are, but there could be alternative ways to look at it too, like somehow adding barbed wire to his kit to slow survivors down and maybe like scrape them up on window vaults. In any case, if you think I've gone in the wrong direction with any of this, just leave me a comment or come tell me personally on stream, I'd love to hear some other thoughts. Who are some other killers that need fixing, buffs or nerfs? I hope you at least enjoyed the talk, and we'll see you next time.